So as a Final Cut Pro editor, you may often have to deal with the difficulties of managing storage and space with all of your different files. Especially at the library level, but even within the event and project level, Final Cut is often generating things like render files and analysis files that will just make your project and the overall library it sits in grow larger and larger over time. But you may want to do some cleanup and consolidation that allows you to still open this project and this library at a later point in time and pick up the edit essentially where you left off without having to discard the entire edit. And so if you're looking to clean up files and save space regarding your Final Cut Pro libraries and other related things, let's talk about a few ways that you can do that. So first things first, I think it's most important to maybe start with just how to find out how much space each of your libraries and the different parts of them are taking up, and just to figure out where and how you can save space within them. So here we are in Final Cut Pro. I'm going to use a couple of sample projects and their libraries to demonstrate how we can clean these up, given that I am now complete with editing them. So here in Final Cut Pro, once I've selected the library on the left-hand side, I can navigate over to the right-hand library property side, scroll down, and you're going to notice that this is going to essentially provide a breakdown of where and how I'm using space for this particular project, which is a corporate edit that I recently finished up. Now specifically here, we can see that in the cache section, this shows that I have a total of around 35 gigabytes of render files, analysis files, and other generated files as part of the project. Now when I look at the storage used for media and motion content section, you can see here that it's referencing my original media, which I have plugged into a solid state drive that's external. So these are all the original files that are getting referenced, but aren't necessarily taking up space on my system. And of course, I can know this by looking at the Macintosh HD section and tell that while Final Cut Pro has optimized around a little under 30 megabytes of content, I also have around 27 and a half gigabytes of proxy file content that sits locally. So just to demonstrate this in Finder, I've now navigated over to the Movies folder where I keep all of these libraries local by default. If I select and do a Command I to get info on the Final Cut Pro library for the Fire and Ice Gala, you'll see here that it shows a size of around a little under 63 gigabytes. And going back to Final Cut Pro, we'll see that these 63 gigabytes or so, if we do some simple math here, are actually really tied up regarding the cache files in the library for the render and analysis files, and then the proxy content that we have. So our main original files are not impacting this, but everything here in the Macintosh HD section and the cache within our library are what's ultimately taking up space within the project. So now for the more obvious bits, well, how do we clean this up? I think it's first worth mentioning the fact that Final Cut Pro does have some built-in utilities that allow you to clear this, though there are some caveats to that, which I will explain shortly. But let's first clean things up this way. So to delete these render and analysis files from Final Cut Pro, what I'm going to do is ensuring that the library is still selected here, navigate up to the file menu, and then select the delete generate library files option here. This is going to let me actually select which files specifically that I want to remove, and in this case I really do want to remove all the different render files, whether used or not. I want to also delete the optimized media for the project, and I also want to delete any proxy files in this case. Now there's a couple of things worth noting here, of course. Obviously, if you delete the render files and the associated content there, this would mean the next time you open Final Cut Pro with this project or library, it's going to need to re-render things, and you're going to need to wait for the actual background tasks to finish this up before you can edit the project again. Now, if I delete the proxy media, it's also worth noting that, well, I've removed proxies for this particular library, and in fact, if I needed them to edit, I would actually have to regenerate those as well. So this is something you'll have to consider in terms of what you wish to save space on and what you choose to delete. So once I've made that selection, I'm just going to hit, well, okay here. Now once that's completed and we've closed out our library, as you can see here back in Finder and looking at our movies folder and the actual Fire and Ice Gala library file, if we attempt to do another command I command and get the space on this, we'll see that we're now only using 174 megabytes of space rather than the 63 gigs or so we had previously. Previously. So if we wanted to preserve the overall edit that we made, and again, pending the fact that we'd have to regenerate some of these render files the next time we load it or remake the proxies, we've now preserved the project for archival purposes and we can save this library file, but still save a considerable amount of space when doing so. But now I want to get into a couple of other additional, more nerdy tricks that you can use to also check what space each and every part of your library is using, and perhaps how you can accomplish a similar thing without needing to rely on Final Cut Pro to do so for you. So let's say we're back from scratch again and dealing with the same 63 gigabyte library file that we once had. 
In this case, I actually saved a backup copy of it before I cleaned it up and just restored it now back to my Mac. So of course, if we open up Final Cut Pro again and check the library out, much as we did before, in terms of the actual space it's taking up, we are essentially back where we started. Now, what if we actually wanted to figure out manually what kind of space our library and our different render files, or proxy files are taking up on our system? Well, on one level, if I hop back into Finder and I right click, on the Fire and Ice Gala library, or whatever your library is, and then show package contents, it's going to take us one layer deeper into the library. Now in this case, this will show my events. I tend to just use the default event that gets created with each library, which is basically the date that it was generated. So we'll go into there. And now in this case, we can see actually individual files for analysis, the original media, the render files. Now, of course, I can do again, Command I and get info on these and just check to see that, yes, much like Final Cut Pro told us, this is still taking up around 35 gigs in terms of render files. We can see that our analysis files doesn't take up too much in this particular case, but we can see our transcoded media takes up around 27 and a half gigabytes, which is just as Final Cut Pro told us, since this is where our proxy media resides. Now individually here, of course, I could just click delete and remove these, and that would take care of things as well. But even before we do this, I want to cover one kind of cool way with the terminal, if you're a little more friendly with the command line and some nerdier aspects of doing this, that can show you a good read on what type of space your Final Cut library is using. So to do this, let's go over to the terminal application, which is located in the utilities folder. Now here you can see I've loaded the terminal application, and we're going to use a couple of different commands that are native to Mac OS and some Linux systems that we can use to actually also determine how much space we're using here on our system for each given library and the different parts of it. So here we're going to use the du command, which if you're actually ever curious, you can always do man for manual or manual pages and then type in du just to see what it does and all of the different options that exist for this. But in this case, we're going to do du-hs, which in this case, H is gonna kind of give us human readable output of the different file sizes we're looking for, and S is going to show this for each file and folder. And then we're going to just navigate basically and kind of tab our way into where the actual library files live. So in this case, I happen to know that there's a user's directory. My last name, Saracini, is where those things would live within my user profile. We have the movies directory. And so as you'll remember, this is the Fire and Ice Gala library. So we're just going to type in fire in this case and just tab our way over. So I can just hit the tab key that will help auto complete this as I go along if I don't want to have to escape the different spaces and everything. And then here, as you'll remember, again, we have sort of a different event that exists within these things that we'll need to also get to. And so another trick I can do is just to hit the tab key. It will show me all of the different folders and files within that given directory. So here I can type in 11, just because we know that's the event we want to get into. Now again, I'll hit tab and I'm going to add one one more thing, which is just an asterisk here. This is going to grab everything within this event folder and essentially print out the same output we saw when we looked at these contents within Finder not too long ago. Now, before I output this, I do want to actually pipe this to one other command, which is going to help us sort of sort this output, which is none other than, well, the sort command. Now, I'm going to actually add one additional flag, which will organize the size of these different folders to ensure that it's, in this case, ascending order rather than just kind of randomly output, and that is the dash H command. Command. Now, once I do this, you'll see we have a clear and concise output of all of the different folders and files within our library and within this particular event. And this gives us a really clear breakdown in terms of what parts of our library, our event, our project, what have you, are taking up the most space. Now, the other cool part about this is that you can effectively use this really on any directory within your Mac in general, and use this to help in cleaning up space in other additional areas. But in this case, by looking at it alone, we can clearly see that the render files and the transcoded media are what's taking up the most space by far, and these are the directories we would want to delete. And so again, while I mentioned we could go back into Finder and navigate our way down to this and essentially just delete each of these additional parts by hand by right clicking and selecting move to trash, we can also still delete this through the command line as well. And so my main advice here before we attempt this is to ensure that you know what you're doing. And I would say, in fact, if you're maybe a little less on the tech savvy side or comfortable with working with the command line, just to delete those things manually or rely on Final Cut Pro to do so. But if you're a bit adventurous and you wanna actually try this yourself through the terminal. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is use the rm command to remove these files. We'll do the dash r, capital R in this case, but I think you could use the lowercase as well to recursively ensure that we remove everything within, say, render files, which we'll use as our first example. And then the f switch to ensure that we force this and we don't get constantly reprompted to remove these things. Now, if my library does have spaces within it, I'll have to use these trailing slashes 
to kind of denote the space. So I'm going to actually just copy this location from above here, which will make it easier than having to manually type it in or add spaces again. And then we are going to just kind of type render and tab our way over. So we have render files here. And now let's remove this. Now, once that's done, you'll see if I run that du command again here, we no longer have the render files directory. And so we've saved a considerably large amount of space. Not surprisingly, I could up arrow my way and pretty much do this for the transcoded media option as well. So if I start typing transcoded, tab that over, and then run the same thing again, this is going to clear that out. And again, if I run the du command, and you'll see that we've now removed that large directory as well. One fun thing we can do here is actually kind of move our way back up into the main movies directory itself and retrieve the output of what all of these different library files now contain. And as you can see, while some of these other libraries I still have contain a lot of space, our Fire and Ice Gala has now been drastically condensed down to 8.9 megabytes. Therefore, this is a file we can now dump off to external storage and have the main core of the edit without containing all of the additional stuff Final Cut Pro generates or that I generated, say, with the proxies to be able to edit it. So hopefully this little run through of how to save space and remove and clean up your different library files and all those related bits has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. I'm definitely going to be covering more Final Cut Pro related tutorials in the future. That is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.